Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. Big monster movies have often done relatively well in Hollywood. Films like Godzilla, King Kong and the likes are considered to be classics in their own rights. But one thing that remains constant in these movies is the fact that only one or two giant beasts are featured. And this is where the Pacific Rim franchise takes the cake, eats the cake, <laughs> and leaves no crumbs. The Guillermo del Toro film features multiple colossus monsters who were biological weapons meant to wipe out humanity. Inspired by the monsters from Japanese folklore, that is the kaiju, Pacific Rim took the threat to humanity and the world to the next level. In this video, we'll get down to the several kaiju that appeared in the franchise. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What are Kaiju. The Kaiju are an alien breed engineered by a sentient race called the Precursors in their home dimension of Antiverse. The word is derived from the Japanese word Kaiju, which stands for giant creatures. Before getting into the Kaiju, let's have a look at the Precursors. These creatures were spindly and stood over 12 feet tall. They could live for millions of years and had the appearance of aquatic insects. A clerical hierarchy existed within the race and they held titles such as Bishop, Cardinal and Ambassador, depending on their appearance. They also resided in towering formations that were a part of the environment they lived in and often relied on biomechanical implements. Meanwhile, the kaiju they created and cloned were maintained in cages. The precursors had one objective, to colonize Earth. They made their first attempt to do so during the Triassic period, that's the era when the dinosaurs had begun to appear on Earth. Around this time, the kaiju had not been created yet. The precursors soon found the Earth's atmosphere to be quite uninhabitable and as such had to put their plans on hold. They had no choice but to wait for Earth's environment to become habitable enough for them. As time progressed, humanity came into the foray and, with them, brought pollution to the planet. As the Earth's environment deteriorated, the planet gradually became habitable for the Precursors. With their original plan back in action, the Precursors created the Kaiju, a race of amphibious creatures, to launch their assault on humanity and colonize Earth. In every way, the Kaiju acted as the Precursors' biological weapons. However, to send the Kaiju to Earth, they would need to create a link between the planet and the Antiverse. So, a breach was opened at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, or rather, on the floor of the Mariana Trench. The kaiju were highly toxic, and their toxicity was categorized from 1 to 5 on the Serizawa scale, a traditional scale used for rating kaiju. The weakest kaiju were classified under Category 1, while the strongest were Category 5. These amphibious creatures could destroy the environment and corrode anything with their acidic blood. They were also colossal when it came to size, often weighing over a thousand tons while being over hundreds of feet tall. They could dominate on both land and water after arriving on Earth through the breach. They could breathe in the water, withstand high pressure and extreme heat, and even survive in space. The first wave of attack against humanity was launched in 2013, when the first kaiju known as the Trespasser arrived in San Francisco via the San Francisco Bay. Around this time, humanity simply didn't have the weapons to fight the kaiju and were in a severely disadvantaged position. But they soon realized that the creatures were vulnerable to nuclear strikes, which soon became humanity's weapon of choice in the years to come. Six months following the attack, other kaiju began to attack other cities around the Earth during 2014 and 2015. The nuclear strikes handled the situation, but it also devastated the environment and surrounding areas. To combat this issue, Dr. Jasper Schoenfeld took inspiration from his son's monster action robot figures to create the prototype for the Jaegers. The word Jaeger is derived from the German word meaning hunter. In the war, the Jaegers had the objective of hunting down the kaiju. While to the kaiju, humanity was their prey, the Jaegers were created to be the hunters of the reigning predators. The Jaegers later formed the Pan-Pacific Defense Corps, and they were piloted by people who were trained to do so. The kaiju war was eventually fought between both sides from 2016 to 2023. The Jaegers held the kaiju back pretty well, but the creatures eventually adapted their strength to that of the Jaegers. Humanity still remained oblivious to the reason for why they are being attacked. They didn't know that humans were considered to be the vermin that infested 
infested earth and the first wave of kaiju were nothing but scouts. The exterminators were about to come after the precursor studied the fighting techniques of the Jaegers to create a new batch of kaiju with specialized abilities. Following the attacks of the newer, stronger kaijus, the Defense Corps began to classify them under categories on the basis of water displacement and toxicity. In this classification, the kaijus that arrived on Earth to scout fell under Category 1 and 2, but by 2020, Category 3 and 4 became regular. As such, the Jaegers began to lose to the beasts around this time. The kaiju continued to attack in 2024 and 2025. Around this time, scientist Newton Geisler analyzed the secondary brain of a kaiju and learned the truth behind the attack. Finally, humanity was aware of the mass extinction that was about to come. Even though humanity won the battle during this wave, the kaiju re-emerged in 2035 after Newton, who had fallen under the influence of the precursors, began to create hybrids between kaiju and Jaegers. As creatures, they were aggressive, especially while in combat. They had a hive mind system, which allowed them to communicate with one another to fight in packs. They also didn't lack when it came to intelligence. With their superior strength, size and intelligence, the kaiju proved to be the most dangerous biological weapon ever. In this video, we'll go over the kaiju that appeared in the Pacific Rim universe. We'll also talk about their category classification to help with understanding their powers. However, not every kaiju has been classified. Trespasser. The first kaiju to ever emerge from the breach made its mark with its name, the Trespasser. As it trespassed into the realm of humanity, San Francisco became the first city to fall victim to this kaiju's attack. It made its arrival with a 7.1 earthquake and tore the Golden Gate Bridge apart. It would eventually devastate Oakland, Sacramento, and the surrounding cities for six days straight. The Trespasser was approximately the same height or taller than the Golden Gate Bridge, and its hide was thick and strong enough to resist weaponry. After leaving a trail of destruction, in its wake, the Trespasser was brought to its demise by the British Royal Air Force and, of course, the United States military. Hundun. The Hundun attacked humanity six months after the Trespasser, making its landfall at Tal in the Philippines. It took advantage of the tropical storm that night and traveled to Manila for its attack. So, by the time anyone could figure out what was going on, thanks to the storm and the darkness, the Hundun was leaving a wake of destruction in its path. Each side of the beast's head had two eyes alongside prongs that faced backward. The top of its head also had a crest. The Hundun was finally killed by a nuclear strike, but its excrement had already contaminated Manila's environment. Kaisef. After Trespasser and Hundun, humanity was attacked by Kaisef in 2014 when it appeared at Cabo San Lucas. The military tried to lure the kaiju away from the city, but their efforts failed. Hence, they had to opt for a nuclear strike that would destroy half the inhabitable areas in Cabo San Lucas. The Kaisef was nuked and its remains were relocated from the city to an aircraft. Sizur. Kaisef's attack was followed by that of Sizur's, the kaiju that made its appearance in Sydney, Australia. Sizur had long jaws and protruding ears. After it entered Sydney, it was destroyed by the military's nuclear attack. Karloff. Karloff was the fifth kaiju to attack the inhabitants of Earth. Its first target was Vancouver, which fell victim to it in 2015. This also marked the first time for a Jaeger to slay a kaiju. Karloff was physically thinner than the other kaiju that had appeared so far. When the Pan-Pacific Defense Corps spotted the creature, they deployed Brawler Yukon, the Mark I prototype Jaeger, which forced the kaiju out of the city. Karloff then intercepted the Jaeger's attack and a volley of missile fire when a blow to the face ultimately destroyed it. Otachi. Otachi was a dangerous Category 4 kaiju. It was responsible for attacking Hong Kong in 2025. Otachi was one of the heaviest and largest kaiju in its category, alongside the likes of Leatherback. When it came to length, it was larger than the others. Otachi was quadrupedal as it walked on four legs, unlike some of the other kaiju that could stand upright. Its appearance mimicked that of a pterosaur, in the sense that Otachi's hand had wings that helped it fly. The wings generally remained stowed inside its forearms. The kaiju had a barbed tail with pincers while bony plates ran along its spine. Its weapon of choice also happened to be its tail. Meanwhile, Otachi's facial structure was characterized by a strong jaw, a crest between the snout and the forehead, and golden dots that looked like eyes, even though the real eyes were situated on the sides of the kaiju's head. Otachi's tongue was capable of acting as a sense organ. It also bore a sack under the neck, which contained a potent and corrosive acid strong enough to melt a Jaeger's armor and liquefy office buildings. Otachi could fly to the edge of space while carrying a weight, which was what we saw it do during its battle with the Jaeger known as Gypsy Danger. Ultimately, Gypsy Danger's weapon, the Chainsword, managed to cut Otachi in half, bringing the kaiju to its demise. 
Leatherback. Leatherback was responsible for attacking Hong Kong in 2025 as well, alongside Otachi. It was classified under Category 4. Its appearance mirrored that of a gorilla's, and its nature is very hostile. However, Leatherback was the type of kaiju to retreat when injured instead of getting aggravated. It was also likely to dabble in a sneaky strategy for its attacks, as it tended to wait for the enemy to get distracted. It then took the opportunity to pounce on its prey. The Leatherback's tremendous weight gave the kaiju an advantage in this position, as it became impossible for the opponent to shake this beast off. Leatherback's weapon of choice was its fists, which acted as maces with its hard protrusions. These protrusions were capable of tearing through armor while its own skin was characterized by its tremendous thickness. Leatherback's shoulders also sported bony armor, while its back had tendrils that wiggled when it got agitated. The tendrils were luminous. In fact, every kaiju was bioluminescent. Leatherback had the advantage over its peer, Otachi. However, it lacked the intelligence and cunning that Otachi possessed and instead relied on its rage to attack, being modeled after a gorilla. Another insane trick up Leatherback's arsenal was an organ located on its back. This four-lobed organ could generate electromagnetic pulses that could disable all the electronics across a wide range. Considering the fact that its opponents, the Jaegers, were digital beings, this particular feature gave Leatherback a great edge over them. Leatherback was ultimately ended by Gypsy Danger, and its corpse was damaged beyond measure. Slattern. Slattern was the strongest kaiju humans had ever encountered, making it a Category 5 kaiju. The beast was brought to the surface after the breach found itself at danger of being destroyed. Not only was Slattern the strongest, but it was also the largest. It happened to be smarter than every other kaiju, making it humanity's most lethal adversary. Slattern was characterized by its high toxicity levels, making the kaiju a nightmare for the Pan Pacific Defense Corps. When it came to its appearance, Slattern had leather-like skin that was very thick. Its tails excelled at long-range attacks and had the ability to pierce through the armor of a Jaeger. The tails could also spin and lash at its opponents, even when a significant amount of underwater current exerted its forces against the Slattern. Its chest had a protrusion which could extend forward with its spike-like appearance. This spike caused blunt damage to Jaegers. Meanwhile, it could also generate sound waves that damaged its surroundings. Aside from having such impeccable attacks, Slattern aced its defense with its resilient body, making it immune to even nuclear attacks. Slattern was later killed by Mako Mordi his partner, Rally Meckett, who fired Gypsy Danger's nuclear turbine at Slattern's internal organs, that too, at point-blank range. This destroyed the kaiju from within and killed it for good. Raiju. The Category 4 kaiju known as Raiju was more like the lethal Slattern. Its purpose was to protect the breach in the Pacific Ocean that connected the Antiverse to Earth from the Jaegers. In terms of appearance as well as behavior, Raiju seemed to be an amalgamation of an iguana and a crocodile. Its shoulders were broad and the kaiju was heavily armored. The beast had a bioluminescent head and was a fast swimmer. It emerged from the Antiverse to protect the breach from Jaegers such as the Gypsy Danger and Striker Eureka. After Raiju was made to run into Gypsy his GD6 chainsaw, it met its necessary demise. Scunner Scunner was another ridiculously strong kaiju under Category 4. It was tasked with protecting the Pacific Breach alongside Raiju and Slattern. Scunner was much like a bull when it came to both appearance and behavior. Its build was broad and it had two horns that were often rammed into its opponents. With four arms, Scunner was able to move underwater at a speed that outclassed its opponents, uh, in this case, the Jaegers. Thanks to its resilient body armor, Scunner could take a heavy amount of damage and survive severe environments. One thing that made Scunner more dangerous was its superior ability to cooperate with other lethal kaiju during combat. Scunner, however, met its end after Striker Eureka used a thermonuclear bomb on it. Knife Head. Knife Head was a Category 3 kaiju that attacked Alaska in 2020. This kaiju had a heavy build with a bulky body. Among all the kaiju in this category, Knife Head happened to be the largest. It boasted a huge, sharp nose that could impale and cut through the armor of a Jaeger. 
The knife head had a blowhole at the center of its head. This hole emitted air after the kaiju came out of the water. Meanwhile, the rest of Knifehead's body made it look like a goblin shark. Knifehead had four arms. The dominant ones were large, while the smaller or secondary arms protruded from the kaiju's belly. While it had yellow lines across its dark gray body, the eyes of the Knifehead had a prominent blue glow. The Gypsy Danger killed it in a similar way as Leatherback, in the sense that it was burnt to the point that it had no chance of survival. Yamarashi Category 3 Kaiju Yamarashi was one of the largest of its kind. When it emerged from the breach in the Pacific Ocean, it was a whopping 2,500 tons. It used to be the largest and the heaviest kaiju back in the day, but its record was later broken by Knifehead in 2020. After its emergence, Yamarashi attacked Los Angeles. It was allegedly green, had a hunch, and it was scaly like a fish and had four eyes with a flat snout. According to the Yamarashi tattoo on Newton Geisler, the kaiju also had tendrils for beards and spikes for hair. Yamarashi was killed in 2017 by Raleigh's late brother, Yancey. Ragnarok Despite being named after a catastrophic event, Ragnarok was one of the weaker kaiju classified under Category 2. This meant that it was one of the scouting kaiju. However, that did not make it any less dangerous for humans as it was known for attacking Tokyo, Japan in 2016, where it made its first mark by triggering an alleged earthquake. This tall kaiju had dull skin with little to no fat on its body. It also had four long limbs, but it was capable of growing more. Its face had a gaunt appearance while it had four tentacles for hair. Being a relatively weaker kaiju, Ragnarok had no special abilities. Ragnarok met its end after Tacit Ronin drove its blade through the beast's back, cutting it in half. Oni Baba Oni Baba was one of the kaiju who attacked Tokyo in 2016. When it came to appearance, it was like a mix of a Japanese temple and a crustacean, which was an odd combination. It wasn't the greatest in height, but outclassed several kaiju when it came to width. Its head was quite unusual, adding to the kaiju's uniquely handsome looks. It had four legs, with two of them having thick claws. These claws could allegedly crush 50,000 pounds per square inch. Meanwhile, its other two arms lay inside its thorax. It had four legs, with two of them having thick claws. Above its large head lay a high crest that was capable of resisting close-range attacks. This kaiju was a rather passive one, however, and actively avoided combat most of the time. That is, until it was provoked. But even at its most aggressive, Oni Baba had a more defensive fighting style. It was ultimately killed by Coyote Tango after its attack caused one of the pilots, Tamsin, to black out, which prompted Stacker to pilot his Jaeger by himself. Oni Baba's head was later used as a monument for display by the Japanese government. Mutivore. This Category 4 kaiju had a plated bone structure around its strange head. Its bladed crest contained its mouth, while each side of its head had three eyes. Mutivore was a bipedal kaiju. However, it had two small appendages on its chest as well. It became more grotesque thanks to the axe-like structures that protruded from its back. The Mutivore emerged from the Pacific breach after striker Eureka was decommissioned from its service. It headed towards Sydney and broke the city's anti-kaiju wall to attack it. The kaiju was ultimately destroyed following the return of striker Eureka who barraged it with missiles. Mutivore attacking Sydney later prompted the citizens to take to the streets for the protest, since they realized that the anti-kaiju walls were relatively easy to breach. Following the protest, the Jaeger program was brought to an end. Mutivore's dead body was used for studying the kaiju. Apex. Apex was different from the other kaiju because of its unusual nature. This is because it was a hybrid between a kaiju and its foe, the Jaeger. It had been created by Shao Industries, albeit unknowingly, as they tried to aid humanity. Akin to the drone Jaegers, Apex sported a biomechanical design, but it also hosted kaiju blood. On top of that, it had a quantum data core like the Jaegers, while having the secondary brain of a kaiju. It hunted for other kaiju in Australia to feed on them, but showed hostility toward all life forms. The Apex could also create breaches of its own without the need of the precursors, and to top it all off, it operated as an individual entity that held no allegiance to either the precursors or humanity.
Crab Cakes. Crab Cakes emerged from the Antiverse via the Breach in the year 2035. It was created by six Kaiju Jaeger hybrids from Pacific Rim Uprising. The Kaiju appeared to sport six eyes with textured grey skin. It had the lower body of a lobster, two arms and a head with a pair of horns. Following its emergence, the operating systems of the hybrids that created it were shut down. Crab Cakes was then cut in half, causing the creature to meet his end. Breacher. The Breacher was one of the most dangerous kaiju, as was evident from it being classified under Category 6. It was initially called upon by the cultish group known as the Sisters of the Kaiju during an attempt to recover the human kaiju hybrid boy. It existed in the animated series known as Pacific Rim, the Black. The beast was bipedal and sported osteodermal armor, making it look like a luminescent humanoid rock. After being dispatched, the Breacher found itself being intercepted by the Jaeger known as the Atlas Destroyer. However, it had gained the upper hand over the Mark III Jaeger, prompting its pilots to self-destruct. The resulting blast disintegrated the Breacher as well. Acid Quill This Category 3 Kaiju emerged from the breach in Meridian City while Australia was being evacuated. It walked on two legs but had seven limbs overall, two arms, a tail, and two tendrils. It walked using its arms while its comparatively smaller and weaker legs hung idle. Acid Quill had to go against Atlas Destroyer, but it ended up beating the Jaeger during their combat. It even tried to pierce Atlas Destroyer's armor, but was pulled back by Apex, the Kaiju Jaeger hybrid we previously spoke about. Apex then grabbed the Kaiju by the tail and smashed it into a rock before stabbing its head. Hybrid Kaiju The hybrid Kaiju were classified under Category 2. They were often controlled by the sisters of the Kaiju. These hybrids had smaller, humanoid statues with short tails. They also had a psychological link to the sisters of the Kaiju. How the cult had achieved such a feat remained unknown, however. They were not strong enough, as was evident from the time when multiple hybrid Kaijus were made to attack Atlas Destroyer. The Jaeger was able to kill them with ease. Bone Spur Bone Spur was a bipedal kaiju of an unknown category. These kaiju clones attacked Australia in the Uprising War. Bone Spur had a reptilian appearance and palms with protrusions that could pierce the armor of a Jaeger. The kaiju was later killed by Apex after it attacked the Pan Pacific Defense Corps. Ripper, Uprising, and The Black The Rippers were created by the Mega Tokyo branch of Shao Industries in their automated warehouse. These quadrupled kaiju looked similar to dogs when it came to their external appearance. They had six eyes, a long tail, tendrils that acted as antennae, and pointy ears as well. These kaiju were less offensive in nature as they mainly acted as scavengers. They'd feed off anything that was present in their territory, and as such, they operated in communities and packs for their hunt. Occasionally, the Rippers were also capable of cooperating with humans. However, the tables turned when larger kaiju species would come into the foray as it caused the rippers to become their prey. Shrike Thorn This Category 4 kaiju made its appearance after attacking Mega Tokyo in 2035 in Pacific Rim Uprising. It emerged from one of the artificial breaches created by the kaiju Jaeger hybrids in Russia alongside Reijin and Hakuja. The beast sported grey and barbed skin alongside a head that was shaped like the head of a hammerhead shark. It could produce an offensive type of plasma while the spines on its tails acted as projectile weapons. It later fused with Hakuja and Reijin to create the Mega Kaiju. Hakuja Hakuja was one of the three Category 4 kaiju that appeared from artificially created breaches, just like Shrikethorn and Raijin. While Shrikethorn appeared on the Russian coast, Hakuja appeared in South Korea before moving toward Mega Tokyo. The hexapedal creature sported armor resembling that of a crustacean. However, it had the body of an alligator. To top it all off, Hakuja could burrow underground like a mole, which allowed it to ambush its opponents without a warning. It later merged with Shrikethorn and Raijin to form the Mega Kaiju. Raijin. While Shrikethorn and Hakuja were classified under Category 4, their peer Raijin was a Category 5 kaiju. Raijin looked similar to a Tyrannosaurus rex and even behaved like one. It had two heads, the inner and the outer, where the outer head protected the inner head. Its jaw boasted the ability to absorb kinetic energy from the weapons of the Jaegers. At the same time, the jaw was also electric. Raijin could use the absorbed kinetic energy to give itself a boost or attack its opponents with a blast. The kaiju appeared from an artificial breach located on the outskirts 
outskirts of the East China Sea. It later merged with Raijin and Shrikethorn to create the Mega Kaiju amidst their battle with the Jaegers. The Mega Kaiju, a certified dangerous kaiju. The Mega Kaiju was a hybrid of the Raijin, Shrikethorn and Hakuja. With each one of these kaiju belonging to either Category 4 or Category 5, it was easy to understand the scale of the catastrophe that the Mega Kaiju was capable of imposing. As an amalgamation of three beasts, the Mega Kaiju displayed all of their characteristics at once. It walked on six legs, making it hexapedal, and had two tails with the ends being shaped like spears, much like its parent kaiju known as the Shrikethorn. These tails also acted like the kaiju's weapon of choice when it came to close-ranged combat. The structure of its upper arm took after the raijin, while its legs were more like that of the hakuja. The raijin also made its mark visible below the neck of the mega kaiju. Meanwhile, its terrifying head boasted a fusion of all three kaiju, giving it ten eyes, five on each side. With all such components, the mega kaiju asserted its dominance over its opponents, the Jaegers, by towering over them. In the story, the mega kaiju attempted to trigger a mass extinction on Earth by killing itself inside the dormant volcano of Mount Fuji. The Pacific Rim's ring of fire would act as the aid and allow the precursors to colonize Earth. Ultimately, the Jaeger known as Gypsy Avenger was able to stop Mega Kaiju by colliding with it in the volcano. The resulting shockwave cut the Kaiju in half, causing it to perish soon after. Copperhead Copperhead arrived at the party five years after Operation Blackout, which was an event where the citizens living in areas of high risk, such as the island of Australia, were evacuated. Copperhead was a Category 4 kaiju who roamed the Australian outback on its four legs. Its hide resembled magma that had cooled down, while its bioluminescent area was similar to lava. It had the ability to pick up sounds from great distances and relentlessly hunted until it got its prey. The kaiju later fought the Atlas Destroyer. The Jaeger pierced and tore its skin using the same chain. It then dismembered Copperhead's leg and kicked the kaiju into the line of a nuclear missile that had been fired. Since kaiju were vulnerable to nuclear weaponry, Copperhead died then and there. Kamisan. Kamisan, which oddly translates to Mr. Turtle in Japanese, arrived from the breach and was immediately intercepted by the Pan Pacific Defense Corps, who were trying to categorize it. The Corps arrives in a submersible, which took damage from the kaiju, forcing them to surface. Kamisan soon followed it when the Jaeger known as Brawler Yukon joined the party to engage Kamisan in a battle. Kamisan overpowered the Jaeger throughout, but with the cooperation of the people in the submersible, Brawler Yukon ultimately managed to defeat the kaiju. <laughs> Target in sight. What are your orders, sir? Crab Cat. Crab Cat was a kaiju that was not present in the Pacific Rim films and only appeared in its promotional YouTube fan film known as Pacific Rim Training Day. The kaiju emerged in Palm Springs, California, while some of the Jaegers trained with the Lieutenant Commander. As Crab Cat could turn invisible, it escaped from being detected by anyone until it reached the training area to fight the Jaegers. Thanks to its invisibility feature and the Jaegers not being seasoned enough, Crab Cat was able to defeat its opponents relatively easily. However, one of the Jaegers, Red Flag, like Horowitz, soon discovered that Crabcat had a vulnerability, Wave Laser. The team soon maxed out on their laser weapons and blasted at the kaiju, revealing it to everyone. After being weakened, Crabcat lost its ability to defend itself and was soon killed with the extendable sword of the Jaeger known as Shameless Fox. Tarantulas. Tarantulas was a 10-footed Category 3 kaiju that exhibited spider-like traits, much like its namesake Tarantula. Naturally, it had eight eyes, pincers around the maw, pouches filled with fluid, legs with sharp spines on the ends, and a round body. Tarantulas had emerged in Australia before the blackout that caused the continent to get evacuated. After its arrival, it was intercepted by Striker Berserker, who pulled off one of the kaiju's legs during their fight. The Jaeger then used the leg to blind one of Tarantulas's eyes. Ultimately, Striker thrust its palms onto the head of the creature and released high temperature waves, frying the kaiju's brains from within and killing it. Reckoner Reckoner arrived in 2016 when it attacked Hong Kong, contaminating the city with a noxious agent released from its blood known as the Kaiju Blue. After nine years passed by, a town was birthed around the remains of the Kaiju. Meanwhile, its skull had become a temple where a Kaiju-worshipping cult practiced their rituals. At the same time, its organs were capitalized on by Kaiju organ harvesters. 
Ferocitor. Ferocitor was a kaiju that was created as a simulation in the Jaeger Academy. It made its appearance during the early tenure of Rally and Yance's semester, where they had to train against the Ferocitor. Even though the kaiju had the upper hand at first, Rally used the microwave bombarder from the Jaeger's nuclear reactor to burn Ferocitor from the inside. Its head was then crushed around the surrounding debris. Bellabog. Similar to Verocitor, Bellabog was a simulated kaiju as well. It had the appearance of a crustacean and an insect with its pincers, short legs, and broad shell. Meanwhile, its tongue acted as its offensive weapon of choice since it could pierce the visors of Jaegers with a single hit. Yancey and Rally Beckett fought Bellabog during a combat where Yancey tore off one of its mandibles and punched it into a wall. Meathead. Meathead appeared on the cover of Pacific Rim Tales from Year Zero with its two curved horns, four legs, and a tail with three pincers. This kaiju never appeared in the graphic novel it graced the cover of, but in the design by artist Alex Ross, it was seen fighting a Chinese Jaeger known as Horizon Brave. Itak. Itak was a kaiju that appeared in 2016 when it attacked Tokyo, Japan. The kaiju had six arms, six eyes, a broad body, and a narrow bottom. When it appeared, it circled the Tokyo Bay while the Jaeger, known as Tacit Ronin, arrived at the Tokyo Shatterdome. As Itak fought the Jaeger, the kaiju tried to force the Jaeger underwater after gaining the upper hand. Tacit Ronin later impaled its chest, splitting it open, and prompting Itak to retaliate. However, Ronin was soon aided by Coyote Tango, allowing Ronin to to split the kaiju in half after slashing it across its upper body. Kaiju Eel Kaiju Eel was a Category 3 kaiju that had four legs and was ray-finned. The creature also had two holes under its head that it used to expel fluid. The Kaiju Eel mainly hunted in water, but it also performed relatively well on land. It had a strong sense of smell that allowed it to detect life in its vicinity. What made the Kaiju even more dangerous was the fact that it could reproduce and multiply by laying eggs. This creature invaded Australia in the Uprising War. It was soon discovered by the sisters of the Kaiju who would gather its dangerous eggs and trade them. These eggs had yolks that could burn through the jaw of a human. Fright Crawler Fright Crawler was a worm-like kaiju, dangerous enough to be considered a Category 5 threat. It emerged during the breach in Australia. Fright Crawler had a segmented body with two heads governing each side, often acting independently. If it was made to physically split apart, the kaiju could regenerate itself into two separate individual beings. It was killed by Vanguard and Striker Berserker when Striker tore the beast apart while Vanguard blasted it to its death. Jawhide. Jawhide was a Category 4 kaiju that appeared from the breach in Australia in Pacific Rim Blackout alongside Fright Crawler and Hammerhorn. This creature had the physiology of a crocodile and was bipedal. It also sported armor that aided the strength of its jaw, making it strong enough to puncture the metal armor of a Jaeger. It was soon intercepted by the Jaeger named Paladin Tornado, but the kaiju destroyed the Jaeger after tearing off its arm and crushing its head with its lethal jaws. Hammerhorn. Hammerhorn was one of the three kaiju that arrived via the breach in Australia. This Category 3 kaiju was quadrupedal with a three-horned cranium that caused great damage to the beast's opponents. Hammerhorn was intercepted by Striker Berserker, who launched several missiles into the kaiju's flesh. Even though Hammerhorn seemed to exceed the raw strength of Striker, the explosions from the missiles in its flesh resulted in the destruction of the kaiju. Baby Kaiju The Category 4 Kaiju known as Otachi Birth Baby Kaiju In terms of appearance, it definitely took after its parent with its large eyes, skeletal frame, and short snout. However, it was born sick and underdeveloped. After Newton Geisler realized that Otachi was pregnant, they were soon attacked by the newborn Kaiju, proving that the realization had come too late for Newton and Co. Unfortunately for Baby Kaiju, it was still attached to Otachi via the umbilical cord when it attacked. The aggressive actions caused the cord to get wrapped around Baby Kaiju, choking it. It was also too underdeveloped to breathe well by itself. Ultimately, the Kaiju swallowed Chow whole and died while Chow managed to survive as he'd just been swallowed. Kaiju Skin Mite Loyal to the name, Kaiju Skin Mite was a type of parasitic creature that lived off of Kaiju bodies. It would get on the Kaiju as they left the Antiverse via the breach. These Skin Mites were like isopods with pale skin. They had pincer-like mandibles in their mouths, which allowed them to latch onto the Kaiju. They were unaggressive and needed ammonia for sustenance, which the Kaiju naturally produced. While they got the nutrition they required from the Kaiju itself, the death of the host Kaiju would result in the Skin Mites living slightly longer before eventually dying as well. 
Kaiju tick, just like the kaiju skin mites. The kaiju ticks were parasitic creatures that required a kaiju host. They were similar to the ticks on Earth in the sense that they were arthropods with eight limbs. They used the sharp tips in their limbs to latch onto the kaiju. The sisters of the kaiju cult often raised special kaiju ticks, and they had the cult's insignia embedded on its back. Despite not being a threat to humans due to their low durability, these ticks were a natural threat to the kaiju as they often injected a potent venom into the beasts. This venom could occasionally kill even a Category 3 kaiju. Kaiju ticks could be bred to produce venom, lethal enough to slay a human-kaiju hybrid. Bone Slum The idea that a town can grow around the remains of a kaiju seems crazy, but it's not. Oftentimes, shanty towns would grow around the carcass or the remains of a kaiju. The aftermath of a battle between a kaiju and a Jaeger would create infrastructural damage that rendered a place inhabitable. The contamination of the environment due to the decomposition of the kaiju would aggravate that, leaving the land inhospitable for a significant amount of time. The Pan-Pacific Defense Corps, scavengers and black marketers would then harvest the body parts of the kaiju, leaving nothing but its bones behind. Eventually, some people would re-inhabit and rebuild the place in a way to make it functional while coexisting with the kaiju's remains, giving rise to the bone slums. Buena Kai Buena Kai was not a kaiju, but a religion that worshipped the kaiju. And no, they did not exist in the antiverse. Buena Kai, as a religion, was practiced on Earth. It focused on adapting to local traditions, but in each adaptation, it held the belief that the time of the end was near. As such, the arrival of the kaijus caused them to believe that the beasts were here to wash away the sins of humanity. The followers would build churches and buildings to worship the kaiju, and they often were well-funded. They also built temples within the skeletons of the dead kaiju. In fact, a temple was built inside Reckoner's skull. Ferno Ferno was featured as a kaiju in Pacific Rim Shatterdome Strike, where it appeared alongside Tundra. Together, the three kaiju attacked November Ajax and Jakarta. Ferno even breached the Jakarta Shatterdome and fought Storm Garuda and Gypsy Avenger. However, after Gypsy dragged its body away by the tail, Ferno met its end. Tundra Tundra appeared in Pacific Rim Shatterdome Strike alongside Ferno. It was the first kaiju to be crafted around the icy concept. When the beast made landfall, it attacked Jakarta, destroying the city with its ice breath. Later, it was hit with a missile from behind and killed by Saber Athena. Soul Fury Sulfuri was a bulky kaiju that had attacked Seattle during the Kaiju War. During its destructive episode, it devastated the headquarters of the Kaistar Company. It was later killed by a Jaeger, the name of which remained unspecified. Hymantura Hymantura did not really exist and was instead an unused concept that remained shelved. It was supposed to be a cross between a switchblade and a stingray, according to concept artist Simon Lee. Out of all the kaiju, Hymantura was to be the most alien-like, since its design resembled that of the precursors more than the kaiju itself. It was also given the ability to fold and open its body in a way to create the illusion of being three creatures in one. The kaiju was designed in 2011 after Simon Lee took inspiration from bending aluminium. The artist also spoke about how he would have made Hymantura a Category 6 kaiju if it had been used in Pacific Rim. Marvelous verdict. The 2013 Pacific Rim resulted in a resurgence of monster movies all over the world, and rightfully so. The kaiju posed a threat so great on humanity that it felt impossible to believe that there would be a day when humanity would have the means to fight such creatures. Gotta give it to the precursors for having the dedication to wait millions of years to get their hands on a planet, though. <laughs> That's real patience right there. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.